Hi, I'm Callum, a product lead at Kodak, responsible for enabling customers to connect with Kodak's API and product owner of our developer portal. So firstly, who is Kodak? Just for a bit of background, Kodak is the platform for business data offering a universal API to help our customers connect to the systems their clients use, standardizing data from their accounting software to e-commerce and POS systems, to banking, payroll, and beyond. We do the heavy lifting for bringing integrations to market so that our customers can focus on launching innovative apps and solutions for their SME clients. We operate in English speaking regions, beginning in the UK, expanding to the US last year and recently Australia, serving SMEs all over the world. So our developer portal, it was originally built as a demo of our API first platform, but today it's being used as a one-stop shop to self-serve in setup and management of our integrations. Built on top of our core API product to help clients launch their apps as fast as possible, whilst gaining a better understanding of the data which their customers have consented to sharing and how this data can be built against. Today, I'm gonna to focus on two problems our portal aims to solve for our developer users around access and integration setup. So problem one, how do I get access to Kodak without needing to engage with our lovely sales team and ultimately make a buying decision? So straight from our marketing site, you can click get started and sign up for access to our free developer account where you can test out all our inter integrations to really get a flavor of what it's like to work with our API, just as you would if you were integrating directly with one of our supported inter integrations. So once I've signed up as a developer and I land in the portal, which end to end should take less than a minute, the first page I see is our learn and build section. Now, unlike most developer portals, we cater to two personas, and that's why the URL is app.codet.io rather than the obligatory, say, developer.codet.io. And that's because our portal sees the convergence of two personas, developer and non-developer users, as our portal serves a spectrum of technical and less net technical players. Today, we'll focus on the developer flow, but you'll notice we've made it as easy as possible for less technically minded people to self-serve too. So problem two, as a developer, now that I'm in the portal, how can I easily set up my white labeled integrations so my customers are comfortable consenting to share their business data to power my application? So I'm gonna break this down into one, getting comfortable with our API, two, setting up integrations as you build to us. So we have this code app for developers section. You're immediately presented with all the key components you need to begin building. Your API key, links to our API docs, also accessible from anywhere by the top panel, no matter what page you're in. Our swagger and a getting started guide for developers. You have a getting started guide here too, which follows the same format, but is less technical. So getting started guide for developers. Let's open it, open this up. It takes you through three steps. How to authenticate with our API, how to get companies connected to their data and how to explore that data. So this very first section, which we'll go into a bit more detail than the other two, is around setting up your auth header, authorizing to the API within Swagger, making your first API call, trying it out. And of course, we have code examples for your own best client in C Sharp and Python here. So let's grab our Base64 encoded uh, API key. Let's open up code out Swagger. Let's authorize it. Let's make our first API call. So we're gonna view company, which has already been set up for you in your free developer account. As you can see, here's our demo company, it returns our JSON and it's connected to both our accounting, sandbox integrations, and our commerce sandbox integrations. So the next two sections, connect and, ex and explore, allows you to do so with the company that comes already set up for you. But now I'm going to walk you through the rest of the portal 
in terms of setting up integrations as a developer, handling consent, and syncing data to power your application. So setting up an integration. We saw that our free account was pre-set up with what with, with uh, our connected accounting and commerce sandbox integrations. But now we want to set up a real world integration. So as we head to integrations, we choose accounting. I'm just going to scroll down to zero. Now you can see this is pre-set up in my instance. Click on manage. And here you can decide on the persistence of a connection with the zero API, whether it's a one-time snapshot of data that you want to capture or allow a persistent continuous sync of data. You can input your API credentials from your zero developer app as well as any integration specific settings. Now, all the steps for setting up each of our integrations are in our public docs. So here for zero, the setup page actually will be linked directly from that page we've just come from um, in, an, in an upcoming iteration. And we've done these for each of our integrations. Now, once you are set up with an integration and your customer has linked their software, which I'll talk about shortly, you want to know when something changes with either the connection or syncs data. So we provide alerts. So you can specify which webhub notification URL is pinged when an event happens. So as you can see here, it's a clean UI. I can choose which rule type um, I want to be notified about. And I can set up my URL, as well as the option um, to be um, sent an email and choose which company it applies for, a singular one or all, a company being one of your customers. So we believe our developer portal should be available for all things configuration, whereas the public API is for product oriented development. So the viewing, creating, and updating of data in your customer's connected systems. So finally, we'll look at configuring your data syncs, as well as API access, security, and configuring your white labeled link flow. So as we head over to our sync settings, on this page, you can set whether data is synced and the frequency at which it syncs via your integration. There you go. And then we'll head over to our profile where you can set your company branded for that white label, your, your company branding for that white labeled experience. You can view your API key as well as the base 64 encoded version next to it so that you don't have to go and open a new tab, find an encoder, do it yourself in a, in a less secure manner on the web, as well as being able to choose the authorization scheme for any alerts that you just set. Finally, configuring our white labeled link product for your SME customers to use. So that as a developer, you can concentrate on plugging into our API rather than building a front end to enable the linking of your customer's data. That's a headache that we've solved and so allow you to configure that final piece of the puzzle within the portal. So note that this page, along with the rest of our portal, is currently being revamped as we switch our front-end framework and components from Angular to React to enable us to better scale. So this might look a little bit different um, in the coming months. And from here, you can set um, for your white-labeled link flow that your SME clients are going to go through. You can set uh, the redirect URLs for when your client finishes their link journey, sending it back to your property, for example. Set your branding within link within the product itself. Information of the type of data an SME is consenting to share and the relevance of it. As well as links to terms and conditions, uh, your support desk, as well as data security policies. You can see here, we've been linked to our own privacy policy. So if we just pull this out as an example, it explains how the data running through the Coda API is encrypted in transit and at rest, as well as information on our ISO 27001 certification. And that is the Kodak Developer Portal. So you're all set. Feel free to sign up and uh, even give us some feedback. Thank you. Hi, Hello. Hey, it worked. Hi. So thank you for the tour.
and uh, congratulations on the portal. Um, this wasn't an easy feat uh, to make it so streamlined. What are the teams that were involved in this uh, development and, and who's maintaining it and how? Uh, sure. Um, great to see you again, Laura. Um, so we've got several teams involved um, from product and design, um, engineering teams, involved product marketing, uh, client enablement, um, a support team, um, and and uh, another exciting new area, a, a, a new team, which I'll, which I'll go into. So product and design um, from the top product discovery seriously uh, internally and externally testing wireframes mocks prototyping using tools like figma uh, with regular contact with our clients with several internal channels for funneling uh, product feedback to our product team from all our other friends internally at Kodak. Um, we use amplitude to give us telemetry to monitor user, user behavior and drive product decisions off um, and we actually we use uh, product board as our insights gathering, prioritization and planning tool, uh, where essentially user insights are matched to solutions that we are thinking about uh, developing um, to directly inform our, you know, the prioritization of that product dev. Um, as far as the engineering teams go, um, I'll go into a bit of the detail of, of, of our approach to building and maintaining. So we're currently implementing a micro front end architecture um what does this mean well it's so that our feature teams building and managing separate parts of the portal um um with everything hosted and uh, and, and surfaced as, as one to the end client so for example one team could be handling identity and user management with another handling the data visualization side of it um, and we also have a shared kodat style library um, so that each of these front ends, these individual teams, um, each of their builds um, ensure consistent styling um, and behavior. Um, in terms of maintenance, the, 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 those feature teams who own the feature are actually responsible for, for maintaining it themselves, um, which can include making sure they're using the latest packages or updating the latest frameworks. Um, and we've also uh, some alerting in, in place to notify the relevant teams when there's an issue that needs to be resolved quickly. Um, just a few of the other teams I mentioned. So we involve product marketing to power updates to be shown within the portal to let users know and be directed to, to newly available features um, to, to kind of drive that engagement. We have a team which we call client enablement and that they help provision client libraries to accelerate our clients, uh, developers build time, which are available via the portal. Um, what I'm quite excited about is our, our startup team. So this is a very exciting new area focused and they essentially act um, partially in an advisory position as ambassadors to our, our growing startup client base to make sure that product development is solving their specific problems. Um, and I think if I didn't give a shout out to this, I'd, I'd get a big tap on the wrist. We've, we've got an incredible support team here. Um, so they essentially perform 24 seven monitoring of the platform um, and you can get live updates that can be viewed and subscribed to via the status page um, about you know uptime history of the platform, for example, um, and that's all accessible um, via that portal. Mm -hmm. And who's? I think that kind of summarizes <laughs> yeah. it. Who's orchestrating all this? <laughs> who's orchestrating this? Um, how do you mean? Do you mean like ex how, how, how are we orchestrating between this the, the different flows within the portal? Um, yeah, so, so I, I guess it, it, it all begins at the start, at the top of the funnel um, with the product team um, from inception through to delivery, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a team effort. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a large team effort. I'm going to ask also from another angle, although you already answered this. So how does the syncing in practice happen between the developer and a business flow? Got you, got you. Okay. Um, so if we start from the start, it's always a good place. The understanding of Kodak um, for our customers begins with a defined set of use cases, which we call applications. And so these denote which endpoints you care about building to as a client um, to achieve the goals of the product which you're trying to build, mm -hmm. bring to market. So for example, um, you have lenders onboarding SMEs to make a lending decision 
on the data accessible via the Coda API, or for reconciling data inside an accounting platform to remove that, that pain, that burden of repetitive manual entry, whether you're you know, an expense card provider um, or uh, EPOS or, co or, or commerce software. Um, so going forward, that's going to shape much of our product development um, and developer experience and, and UX considerations. Um, kind of building on that point, so we've got this single universal API and not several, that's our, our whole value prop proposition. Um, and so we have to serve all these use cases in, in one environment, which is a unique challenge. And so this means our portal needs to be many things. Um, our portal is an integration setup portal. It's an API configuration portal. It's an API documentation portal. It's a data visualization portal and so on. And so whilst the, the breadth of these journeys is at times a difficult thing to encompass in one place, um, it's actually been key in keeping our experience flexible, especially as we unearth new ways for our clients to use our universal API. Um, and so as these use cases mature, um, we're able to make the dev portal experience more and more bespoke to these use cases as we really get to know these clients. Um, to add to that, we, so I, I, our users portal journey is differentiated. We've, we've got different roles, admin, developer, analyst, and, and we show, hide, and, and kind of um, signpost these features based on these roles so they can focus on the parts of the portal that they need to and not worry about all the noise. Um, with the journey beginning at uh, onboarding, where you land on that learn and build section you saw in the demo. Um, and it's important at each stage um, for uh, um, you know, the language that we use. We, we use different wording to try and focus on the areas we think will be relevant to the user mm -hmm. based on their role. Um, so I'd say finally, we, we offer this, we hope, sensible developer experience, uh, a, a linear journey that gets more and more granular, um, which you drill down. Uh, which you drill down into over time based on your stage of integration with the Coda API. Um, so we, we have different groupings of endpoints for setting up integrations, for getting connected to your SME customers, and then playing with the data in Swagger, um, you know, a playground, if you will, this, that, you know, that being a familiar notion mm -hmm. to developers. So really thinking about that timeline of, of getting set up, of integrating um, as you were mm -hmm. a developer. And um, I know that you recently doubled down on ensuring the accessibility of the portal. Would you tell a bit more about that? What went into that? Sure. I've got, I mean, I've got a really hard, a hard uh, <laughs> thing to follow after, after Barclays' presentation. I, was, I really enjoyed that. Um, so I guess handling accessibility in the fintech space mm -hmm. can be challenging in the financial tech space. Um, presenting complex data and products to the diversity of users that the space serves is tough inherently um, but that makes it all the more important to meet, the, meet high standards so Kodak's goal is always is always um, uh, access for all so if we, th if we think from a visual accessibility perspective um, I think it's around three percent of people in the UK have some form of sight loss and this being a spectrum so obviously navigating this can be a challenge um, and Exactly, you know, one that I personally empathise with, um, and and we've got we've got some other great challenges in our portal, particularly where we're presenting and visualising lots of data. But luckily, it's I think it's made easy for us um, by the uh, the web content accessibility mm -hmm. guidelines. We're always aiming for AA accessibility, um, and we're in the midst of overhauling to our new design system. So this is a, across the board from the developer portal to our customers end user experiences, such as our, our link product, which we, which we also mentioned there. Um, don't want to go into the into the weeds there, but it's, it's all about consistency. So our, our tooling helps. Um, so we can interact with and, and QA our own component libraries. So all the stuff which goes into that, you know, making that front end. Um, this is via Storybook. So this software, this, this tells us the level of accessibility that we were achieving at a granular level. Um, it even lets us see our components as if we're visually impaired. Um, and all components go through this process. Now, accessibility, it also means clear language and information architecture, so appropriate plain language. Um, and this is ensured by our, our, our I guess, a, approach to copy 
um, an appropriate separation of of the information we're showing on screen um and that and that's supported i've i've, I've got to dip them in this um by by our, our technical mm -hmm. writing team um they do a great job there and make my life a lot easier um so ultimately it's just it's really about good design um, regardless of any specific accessibility need whether it's legible text with uh, I don't know, the right contrast making text readable for all or jargon free copy that actually makes sense um and whenever i'm kind of talking about this this theme to our internal teams um you know explaining the importance whether it's in you know uh, backlog planning or refinement uh, i like to remind them that you know at, at the heart of kodak is our universal api and this universal principle is equally important when it comes to the accessibility um, of our mm -hmm. developer portal um, and i think that's quite a nice kind of lasting sentiment yeah it's easy to remember that in case you would be lost in the weeds mm. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish you success with rolling out all the new changes. And I thank you for showing us the portal.